Hello everyone, we are live. Today is November 30th, 2022. We are back to our normal, ourself in our studio, Natural Pigments. My name is Tatiana Zaitseva and behind the camera is George O'Hanlon who, like always, uh, supports me and helps me if I will forget something. So, um, I will... Uh, I promise you to talk about uh, light fastness test and I know some of you already expecting this. So I need to be fair and so uh, all our results are uh, basically ready. Uh, they need to be read, uh, read it or read uh, because uh, the, we, we made all tests but they, uh, George needs to put them together and uh, of course we will first represent to our cohorts, um, uh, on our cohorts meetings, what will be on December 3rd. And uh, so to people who really uh, support us and cares about us, and so then we will, uh, we owe them this information first, and then we will uh, put all that together and uh, uh, put for this for public. Today we will talk about cadmiums specifically about natural pigments, Rublev colors, uh, cadmiums. And uh, so uh, two colors are new. And um, so this position, you probably, if you already follow us for some time, so you know then uh, we have, uh, natural pigments has this position, so then nothing uh, could be non-dangerous. Every or anything could be uh, harmless. <laughs> no, no, harmful. done harmful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, see, I need your help. So, and uh, if you are convinced, then cadmiums are not uh, your colors, and you have substitution. So then, uh, this would be just entertaining for you today. But uh, for people who really cares about uh, uh, this uh, pigments, because it's quite good pigments. They are light fastness. They, they show in already more than 100 years uh, the you know stability and we truly believe in these colors and so uh, we definitely will show today you uh, all positives and we will talk about negatives if you have questions. So the video today will be approximately 17-18 minutes and so uh, please ask the questions immediately and uh, George and I will answer. But um, for now, let's start. In range of uh, ruble of colors, we have seven cadmiums now. So the um, the cadmium uh, deep and um, cadmium yellow deep is new for uh, for us, uh, and uh, and cadmium maroon will be new. Uh, this is very exciting, and of course, if you uh, ever uh, listen me on, on any media, uh, in uh, any uh, classes or any <laughs> uh, videos. So I, five years ago, I was swearing that we never will touch the cadmiums because everybody else uh, doing such a great job, all other companies. But of course, um, artists started call George and beg him to make cadmiums how we make. So that means without any additives. So uh, you will have uh, some separation once in a while, uh, although it looks like we, uh, we did quite jo a good job uh, on this um, right now. So uh, the first row, what you saw, we are mixing lead white and uh, on yellows. And I, I was trying to do 50-50. And uh, so, but even titanium you saw on the second row almost didn't do any dent on the chroma. So here I'm, I will be trying to do a little bit 
different so where we uh, i put a lot of titanium and just small amount of the um, of the cadmiums and at least you can see the color so the cadmiums are very opaque pigments very powerful especially yellows actually you will see that a little bit later in uh, in reds it will not be the same case but yellows are just dangerously powerful and here we're mixing with the barite so you want to talk about what barite is for those who don't know yes uh, barite is although it's a now a line of uh, white colors it's absolutely transparent color and so um, it's barium sulfate and so it's um, again a uh, good pigment but what I did notice, which uh, it surprised me, but George said then, so he will probably do the spectrophotometer on, uh, on that one. And I will show you a little bit later after video um, how it's, in my mind, it changed a little bit of the color. So it's, uh, it's actually cooled down. Berai did cool down the um, cadmium's yellow, which didn't seem to to the same case with uh, reds or orange one so here i since i was surprised to see with bright so then we decided to do let's let's do this with velasquez medium because essentially it's kind of the same except the pigment here would be chalk instead of barium sulfate and so and that was absolutely transparent beautiful you know uh, color and it's actually boost the color what i think so and again i will show you later so of course here is um, uh, we were trying to mix that with uh, our ultramarine uh, in this day uh, in this case i took ultramarine green shade so and was trying to to see what what can be done, what greens can be done with, uh, with these colors. It's really surprising because the ultramarine is very transparent, but, yep. it, um, but it puts a real big dent into the yellows, especially the uh, yellow light, which tends to be a little bit more transparent than the other two yellows. I would say then it's a little bit like kind of like muddy colors here, which again, it's, um, it was interesting. That's probably, but because, very polished, that's probably very because the very reddish ultramarine, yes, yes, which is very different yeah. from cobalt. Yeah. So here would be co cobalt. And again, we will try to do several greens. I would think that uh, here's greens a little bit uh, were a little bit cleaner. So these cadmium yellows are cadmium zinc sulfides. Cat so the there's a question from mm -hmm. Sanjita says is cadmium yellow light greenish like a yeah. cadmium yellow yes so yeah. and Lemonium. unfortunately it's good uh, uh so the, good, the names good question are, yes are... <laughs> unfortunately in industry there are no standards in terms and of the names names yeah. yes and so um we choose what i mean every company choose different uh, although it's the same cadmiums it's py35 in uh, order on yellow uh, yellow cadmiums but um, we all call that different. Some, some call uh, cadmium lemon, although I... And cadmium I, pale. Pale, yeah. So the, the name I, doesn't really matter. Exactly, no. exactly. So that's why we have this program. So then at least you can see in the same bunch uh, how they act together. And um, so I do know so we had customer, uh, she bought our uh, cadmium yellow light and she was absolutely disgusted and upset saying then, oh, that's not the lemon. 
how she accustomed from another company and it was like so why 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 do you know why to be upset it's it we can't match other companies we don't have that not ability we don't even want to do this we want to be different <laughs> although of course it would be good if we would have some kind of standard well there is the color index but, yeah but the game so the, the, the range of cadmium pigments available to artist material companies are actually far larger than what you see in most lines of paint and that has to do with the fact that these pigment companies make a very big range from very pale uh, yellows to very dark um, orange uh, yellows, actually oranges. And then from the reds, very uh, orangey reds to very dark. It's like what we see here. Yeah. So see all these three cadmiums right now, cadmium reds and, and maroon, they have all the same number. 108. Yeah. Joyce asks, what is the mo what red is most vivid? Oh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, probably they're all, they're all good. They're all yeah. good, but probably now working with them, uh, probably the medium one is uh, is good one. Of course, it's like, although we always were talking about if you want substitution for, let's say, for vermilion, so we uh, we put as a cadmium yellow light, and you will see here a little bit later. So then it's it's basically impossible to to recreate the vermilion color. Yeah, and so you see here a little bit different than with yellows. So you definitely can see uh, a mix with titanium. So you see then it's tinting, where in yellows was not even the case. But I still wanted to show you a little bit more. So then uh, in this case, I will put a little bit more of titanium. And then, yes, to see the pinks. Beautiful one, beautiful, just absolutely just it's good exercise for us too every time to do that. And Julia, who's asked a question, we're going to get to your question a little bit after this. Uh huh. She's in Sweden. She's asking a question about um, our collection of yellows in Europe. Oh, yes. Okay. So maroon color, uh, like I said already, it's new color for us. We just introduced that last week. And um, just for that reason, uh, we will have, it's, we have on our website special deal. And um, please look on bundles. It's on, uh, uh, on the middle, um, bar you you will see now it's new um, feature for us we still have we have uh, we never had this before but now uh, if you buy the bundle so then you can save money so look how the barite uh, i, I you, think it actually helps the intensity of exactly. the color exactly that's yeah. what i just wanted to say so yeah. on both colors uh although of course on bright on like i will show you a little bit later how it's um, uh, it was cooled down but on reds, it just made them literally vivid colors. And again, it's so powerful. You see how much bright I'm putting and it's still not, not changing much color. Too. Yeah, so it, it does increase the opacity, yeah. excuse me, the, the transparency, yeah. Yeah. but it uh, doesn't affect the color much. Yeah. This is interesting, Blue yeah. Ridge. I know uh, a lot of people mixing that and uh, trying to pretend as a, was it burnt siennas or siennas? Yeah, burnt siennas are far, siennas in general are far more transparent than what you would achieve with these two colors. And it's less expensive. Yeah. 
which is a key factor. <laughs> Yeah, there's the yellow ochre tends to make a little more subdued orange in this series, in this particular series. Here we go with cadmium yellow light. Yeah. And the reds. So since we can put on a question uh -huh. here from Alan because it's pertinent to, Ooh. could you mix a can skin tone? Can you put tone? down so then people can see oh. what's happening? Yep. Okay, great. Can you mix a skin tone of red light, yellow light, a bit of ultramarine and lead white? Yeah, that's actually how some artists do that. But in reality, it's much easier to do it with earth colors and then use the cadmiums to, as key colors to pull up the intensity where you need that. But it's much easier to work with neutrals, which are earth colors, rather than doing mixtures like this because it's quite, because flesh tones are very, are very neutral. Here we go with- Here, uh, your ultramarine, yeah. 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 Although I didn't mix ultramarine and yellow and uh, red, but Alan, uh, you probably can, you will figure out, because here I was uh, looking what, what can, can be done, what purples, I guess. But you definitely can mix the uh, skin tone for sure. Mm. Another question, do you sell a fire engine red type of color? Uh, fire, uh, that would be uh, cadmium. The, the medium. Uh, uh, yeah, probably. It's a medium. Or mix it together then, with light. And then maybe, maybe a little bit of the maroon just to darken it. Which again, so uh, like I said, if you, okay, here. Um, right now on, uh, on our website, so we have a bundle. It's only for one week we will have that uh, promotion for all colors. So if you buy uh, some amount of uh, colors, so then you can say up, save up to 30%. But if you buy like, what's, uh, what's the deal we have? If you buy two, you, you have 10%. If you buy three... 20 15 and so oh, 15 or, no, uh, something yeah yeah i forget now but you can check on the bundles page which is on the top net top navigation bar so since i was doing orange uh, separately from because it's not definitely not among the yellows and um, not a not even close to reds so I thought, how about I will compare that one for you with molybdate, orange molybdate. And uh, you see, it's a little bit uh, reddish, molybdate on right side. But you will see even more right now. It's absolutely stunning pink on orange molybdate. So orange, uh, orange molybdate is PR104 and it's lead chrome molybdate and so it's a lead color and like I said if you scared uh, dangerous colors this is one of them but we do believe so you as intelligent people as a people of 21st century, you can read and protect yourself um, from any, actually everything what, what's uh, George O every time saying then under your sink, probably more uh, crazy chemicals than, than even in your palate. 
uh, here I was uh, I, I actually uh, uh, mix um, orange uh, cadmium orange and cadmium red light together so just to see if I can achieve that pink and you can see that but orange molybdate is much cheaper than uh, cadmium so then now we you know introduce you new color if you never tried this is one to to try for sure beautiful beautiful one and behaves well and yeah it is a lead and we are, color yeah it is a lead, lead color. color yes that's what orange i said or, yeah and uh, you see i'm using gloves which we always recommend yes. regardless of the color Got lots of questions, which we'll yes, we'll get absolutely. to right at uh, right after absolutely. this. Absolutely, absolutely. We knew then we will have a lot of questions about cadmiums, and so if questions if about toxicity yes. and permanents. Absolutely. So about permanents, we can we can talk right now. Yes. yes. So. So let me let me go through this. Okay. And let me get to this. Look um, at the beautiful violet. So first of all, let's add oh. this one. There we go. Oh, we finished. Yep, that's oh. finished. Okay. So um, Amaresh asks uh, that the cadmium uh, yellow yellows contain zinc. They're cadmium zinc sulfide. So again, uh, you know, the anytime we hear the word zinc. Everybody starts becoming afraid. Uh, that's really not this. Should never be that situation. Remember, zinc, it's zinc oxide, oxide is the problem in oil. And again, I need to emphasize only, only in, oil. in oil. So, uh, and since it's a zinc sulfide, zinc sulfide is apparently safe in oil. Uh, there's actually a white that is a zinc sulfide. So this happens to be a yellow cadmium zinc sulfide uh, is uh, perfectly compatible with oil. Doesn't cause the embrittlement that zinc oxide does. So no problem there. So don't have to worry about that. And of course, uh, a lot of information, wrong information is coming from old books where the cadmiums are changing, the, you know, they're darkening or they're... So these days, they are completely different because they are changed chemically. So, George, if you will uh, talk a little bit about uh, the clarification about how they are processed right now and why they call CPF. Yeah. The, he's not listening. I, he's I'm paying attention to something else. Uh, can you please answer about uh, how cadmiums are now different? So the, the main issue with cadmiums is, is what, we're, what we're seeing is that in the last century, there was different ways of making cadmiums. And so this, uh, what this did, of course, was uh, made various crystalline forms of the, of the pigment particles. And apparently some of these forms uh, which were non-hexagonal, uh, were more susceptible to the environment. So as a result, there is noticed that cadmium pigments manufactured in the 19th century and perhaps in the very early 20th century uh, had increased solubility, uh, also free sulfur um, un or unreacted sulfur and perhaps unreacted cadmiums. And so uh, they were much more reactive and apparently darkened or in some cases faded. And especially this was true of the yellow, the cadmium yellows. Uh, and that's mainly because the cadmium reds didn't, uh, didn't suffer from this because they were calcined. And it means they were put into a furnace and heated to a high temperature. So uh, they're, they're doing that today with the cadmium yellows. They're uh, calcined which also reduces the solubility. 
So that's the key, por uh, key idea behind that. Uh, that goes along with this particular question here. Are cadmium colors compatible with red LEDs, LED chromes, LED tins, naples, etc.? cetera? Uh, and that's because LEDs can be sol sensitive to sulfides. Well, um, that's true. Le lead white is sensitive to sulfides. Some of the other LEDs you mentioned are sensitive to sulfides. Uh, and of course, once lead combines with a sulfide, it turns black. And, but this, uh, again, uh, this was an issue more in the 19th century, perhaps in the early 20th century, not so much an issue today. Or if you buy in cadmium, if it's real cadmium and it's very cheap, you need to think about that. Yeah. So again, all of the cadmiums today are manu that are used by uh, American companies, companies or, or in the Western Hemisphere or in um, Europe. Uh, are using cadmiums from the same pigment company because the uh, or companies there's several of them and all of them are manufactured in England at this particular time so uh, they make very good cadmiums very low solubility as a result of that should we instead of people watching me so should we just at least to put that, um, you want to look at the yes. colors. Yeah, there so, we go. Yeah, while you can explain and some so, of that. Yes, and while you answer in the question, if we do have questions, so I just uh, wanted to show you so how cadmiums uh, this look like like here. So this is just switching. This is full color, and this is with titanium. So then you can see. On the uh, right side is with titanium, and um, I wanted to show you the same. It's uh, it's um, I'm I'm talking obviously about uh, yellow uh, cadmium, and so here's uh, with Velasquez, and you see it's still powerful. And I uh, I did this more than fifty percent. I probably maybe here's like one third of the. Um, of the cadmium and two thirds of the Velasquez medium. But look here. And although on camera I see it's kind of looking dirty, but it's not uh, in reality. But in reality, it's very cool. Here's the full strength. So this this is and here. Uh, mixed with uh, with barite, and you see how it shifted the color. Which... So the one on the left, far left, yes. is the yellow light. Yellow light with, with barite. barite. Yes, and this then is this full, full strength. Strength. Then this is the uh, medium uh, with the barite, and really, it's um, yeah. And I know on camera it's not the best, but so here is of course with uh, ultramarine. And uh, by the way, I did this uh, two day, three days ago, and it's already dried, which is which is uh, unusual. very unusual. And uh, I th again, I wanted to see how fast it's dry uh, because, and you see how thin it is. And uh, so, of course, here is thick, and here is this uh, this cobalt. Oh, actually, that is dried too. Not su which surprising is, with the cobalt, actually. Which is, yeah. uh, it's quite thick, but... Yeah. Okay. And um, so here reds with lead white. And you can see how vivid colors are. Somebody was asking about, and so, and I... Yeah, it's something in between two. Um, cadmium yellow light and medium are definitely very vivid colors and they and warm warm up a little bit with the lead white as opposed to Eesh. okay so titanium with very titanium. slow dryer yeah <laughs> and it's very thin but still um that's i need to yeah to and you can in. see quite a bit cooler with yes. the titanium let me see this so it's so very important to with kind lead, of figure out the white with lead Here's dried, and so again, it's three days ago, but um, some cadmiums did, some didn't dry. So here's this bright, and I just wanted to show you. So this is full strength from the tube, 
And here is this beride, and again, it's two thirds of beride and one, uh, one of the color, one third of the color. And you see, it's still very powerful. Here's full, but if I would show you how, again, it's really, really pushing color, like brightening, interesting. Because here's our burnt siennas. <laughs> so, again. Not really. No, no <laughs> of course not. <laughs> the that's cadmium why, with that's the why blue I showed ridge this. yellow. Yeah. <laughs> so, with blue ridge yellow ochre. And, of course, here's uh, cadmiums with um, cadmium yellow light. And uh, so, different strings. So, then I, I just made it. Um, what I will show you right now, this is beautiful cadmium orange and molybdate on right side. So this is different strength. So here's not a full light, but 50-50 uh, here. And here's uh, even more. And you see how beautiful. Titanium. Right? With, uh, uh, with lead white. Oh, lead white. Oh, oh I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Titanium here's with lead. And, here's, and then, yes, no. because here's with titanium. Because you wrote lead yeah. white titanium. Yes. On yeah, the you're right. Absolutely. So okay. I'm just misspoke. So that's a, yes. Is that our is that our mixed pigment? Lead white titanium? No, 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 no. Here's what I'm saying. So here's with lead, lead white uh, okay. and here's with titanium. titanium. Okay. Here's with lead white with titanium. I you know, see, I messed up everybody. I'm just reading <laughs> your notes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so and that's just and here's titanium. just with yeah. titanium, yeah. yes. Different uh, amounts. Yeah. On the left side, cadmium orange. On the or two right ones is yeah. the molybdate. Yeah. And here's uh, whisperite, which again the full strings they very very identical. It's uh, I mean it's a little bit on reddish side on of course on molybdate, but you can see like wow it's. And again, barite is not a white pigment technically. It's an extender yes. pigment. And, yes. But we sell it, tech, you know, as a white pigment. I mean, it's, it, it looks white. But, yes. But Long it's time ago when we didn't have any other whites but lead white. So we, we basically did this um, uh, barite as a something what uh, you can tune down. Uh, any uh, any colors, but same time didn't change. Do not change. Yeah, that's do not it. change the chroma. So um, that's what happened. And so, but then since that we introduced, of course, lithopon. Then we introduced titanium. But then people are, were asking us to make um, titanium lead white. So we have all of these colors now. And. Uh, so let's go back to yeah. the question yes. Julie asks if she, about ordering um, some of the colors in Europe. And of course, Julie, you can order from the Europe store, which is naturalpigments.eu. We have all of the colors except, except uh, mar maroon. maroon. So yeah. we are sending <laughs> today to, uh, to Europe. And so therefore, we will prolong <laughs> that that deal what we are having for uh, for, for, Europe. The, for Europe especially because yeah. we uh, like always we are a small company we every time prepare uh, mostly of course for our uh, customers and then we was like oh my god we we forget about Europe now it's separate identity <laughs> so then of course we are sending we will have all colors there okay so going back to Here's, a, here's an interesting question. All pigments that are based on minerals and some that are vegetative are toxic. Better just to treat all with care. I'm not sure that is, that actually is not correct. <clears throat> um, so uh, not all pigments are based on minerals. So as an example, pigments such as thalocyanine blue and green uh, quinacrinone, Hansa, dialoride, aloride, and so forth. Are Basically, all, all synthetic are modern colors. Or, organic. They're yeah. organic. Yes. And they're synthetic. Yeah. Um, 
the mineral colors, what we call inorganic colors, are cadmiums, lead, um, of course, all of the natural earth colors are based on minerals, and they are not considered toxic. Well, that is, the earth colors aren't considered yeah, toxic. Yeah, earth colors. Uh, lead, of course, cadmiums are considered I'm toxic. sure if you we'll are here, yes, I'm sure if you are here today, that means you read George's article, so he... Or maybe they haven't. So there is, there is a full article on the website, uh, which is, talks about cadmium colors. It all began with medicine, and it goes through the history of cadmium, the toxicity, the permanence, and so forth. Quite an extensive article on cadmium. But Alana, you're absolutely right. Every time on all our classes we are teaching, please, um, yes, treat all substances, <clears throat> all pigments, or all colors, uh, with as care. dangerous, with care. All, yes. all materials that you're working with should remember, be treated with care. Remember, all of your paints are chemicals. You just don't see that like this, but you need to remember it's all chemicals, and so then you need to, to treat that with care, that's for sure. Here's another question. Um, what creates transparency in mediums or paint? Is it particle size? It's all together. It's the particle size and it's uh, the pigments itself. So because the it's refractive, uh, refractive index. index. And so if you don't know what's refractive index, so you can Google that or you can go to painting best practices and uh, dot com, dot com mm -hmm. and register there. And by the way, uh, we slowly trying to move uh, everything to painting best practices uh, uh, forum there. Yeah. So and please register. And so, and uh, very often we have very important subjects where we are discussing this uh, every last Saturday of the month uh, on cohorts meetings. And uh, if you are really desperate to know something very important for you, so then uh, you can ask permission to be on cohorts meetings where George uh, live answering uh, all questions and we are spending as much time as you need uh, on that, you know, on that days. So, but go ahead, register on paintingbestpractices.com. And so then you will have all uh, latest uh, news. Which medium are uh, recommended? For this, for cadmiums. <sighs> Julia, you of course I, you know, of course my favorite, of course, it's always Velasquez medium. Because again, you you could see then um, it's I think the safest what we are every time saying. So the impasta medium and Velasquez medium are the safest mediums because they do have particles. They do have. It's not like oleo gel, just where the uh, just really only oil. Although oleo gel is our bestseller, but Velasquez medium it it's fun because cadmiums are they don't have exactly the the most beautiful body to say about the colors because we do have much more interesting colors like the french colors we have they are you know they're all long and stringy and they they have all kind of characters where the cadmiums do not especially you know um because it's only pigment and the oil so then Velasquez definitely will change the property of this, uh, this uh, color. So I, I think it's, it's a good one to try. Uh, but overall, we are saying then, and you're probably right. So then in this series, probably would be good to use the medium because, because of the, uh, the power of this uh, colors there. Um, they're very... Uh, what is it? Boost, bust. <laughs> well, they're very, yeah. they're very high tinting, very uh, high tinting strength colors. Yeah, and of course, uh, everybody thinks you can't get lead white in Europe. You can. You can. You. And we sell there, uh, and uh, I don't know. Well, looks like we are sending today actually uh, next batch, but you can absolutely buy from us na uh, naturalpigments.eu. And uh, so the only thing you would need before uh, we send it to you, so you would need to sign the document, then you absolutely understand what you are doing. Uh, 
That's the website that's, there. Thank so, you, Re. Thank you, Re. And um, so, yeah, we sell all our uh, colors there, including okay. LEDs. Another, uh, so let's go back to everybody, of course. Uh, we Thank you, Europe. Little... Looks like you're watching us. Yeah. That's good. So um, Neil, of course, asked about, in, and we've answered this a little bit at the beginning, but um, it's bare repeating uh, information about the toxicity of cadmium. So, so um, you know, like always, I did homework. So I, I watched several <laughs> videos from another um, individuals and companies uh, who are saying then uh, the toxicity overblown, it's not that dangerous. And so we will not tell you that. Um, like I said, so everything can be uh, harmful, no, dangerous. And, uh, but cadmium is one of these uh, colors where you can protect yourself. And so cadmium is dangerous when you breathe. So if you breathe the powder, if you breathe the pigment, so then that would be the danger. But once it's enveloped in oil, so it's, um, it's not us, but I still would suggest for you to, to wear the, the, the gloves. So George obviously wants to add something. So, so if you do work with pigments, which we do sell, and since we do work with uh, iconographers and people who paint the um, egg tempera, so please be sure then, um, then you don't have a dust from cadmium. Um, other than that, again, you need to remember uh, everything what you read as a danger you need to see what the pass through. So like, for example, titanium here in uh, California is, uh, is prop 65, but it's again, it's in food, it's in our uh, plastics in, in um, everywhere. everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. But the way uh, how, uh, like for example, titanium is um, dangerous when you again, when you breathe the, the powder. Same with cadmium, and so it's uh, in the body. It's not soluble. So let's let's clarify that yes. just for a moment. So again, there's two factors here. Tests, animal tests specifically, have shown that inhalation of the cadmium uh, dust will or or uh, cadmium sulfide uh, inhalation will cause cancer. That's an animal test. Hence, it's been classified as a carcinogen 1B, which means that in animals, it causes cancer. It is not known at this time whether it causes cancer in humans, but we can presume it does by inhalation. That's an important point. So the other factor is where, it, uh, where, where cadmiums are problems if they become soluble and they are ingested uh, or enter the, the human system, the digestive tract or some other form. So uh, in that case, then yes, it is, it is toxic. However, the cadmium pigments have very low solubility. And again, some may argue that the tests for solubility don't take into account all factors in the human digestive system, and that is true. So again, just be careful using the color uh, and just protect yourself from ingesting it. So and that's the key thing. By the way, it was discovery for me, George uh, uh, yesterday uh, shared with me, so then the most where cadmiums are used, not in your colors, not even in colors in the industry, it's actually on jewelry, uh, which again, read that article. And so uh, every company what using f uh, the, for ma paint making, what did you say? It's like around 3% from whole. So the, the current in figure, according to 2019 and according to the International Cadmium uh, or Organization, says that only 3% of all cadmium goes into pigment, <clears throat> a whopping 57% uh, is used in jewelry, 
So that's a far greater concern. And the jewelry we're talking about is usually fantasy jewelry, jewelry sold to children. And of course, uh, this has been largely banned in many countries, but still continues to be manufactured. And so that's, uh, that's, there's, that's plenty of, there's plenty of places to get cadmium and not from paint. That's for sure. Yeah. Let's go on here to another comment. Would you say that cadmium can replace magenta on the palette as a mixing no. red? No, 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 because it's too powerful. And uh, once you tune it's, down, it's... Um, it, it's very opaque, it, too. It, yeah. So it's not really a good primary color in that. We will be publishing the Munsell notation for those colors yes. uh, later. Shortly, yes. Yeah. And so probably and, in the next week or so. Yeah. And again, mm -hmm. um, what I understand magenta is um, organic pigment. And um, is that uh, well, magenta? Well, magenta is it's just depend, a color. Yeah, it's not it's really like a usually like pigment. what people say that uh, the it's usually, usually they're it's using, organic pigment. Yeah, they're usually using organic Which, pigments. Again, like a like a quinacridone magenta. Yes. Which again, so um, if, if you will ask me, of course, I will say like it's good because you, the whole industry is moving opposite <clears throat> from, um, from inorganic or heavy metals and uh, to organic pigments. And um, if you are a serious artist, you absolutely know that there is no way you can have substitution for cadmium. So, you know, then like now days we even have this cadmium free cadmium which is oxymorons uh, so but it's like even if you will make a mastone looking like a cadmium it no way will in the teens will act the same so so then uh, if you want to exchange the um, uh, magenta which is good no, I'm joking. Um, so it's, uh, but no, they, they definitely not even close. Edwin asks, what cadmium color would you use instead of vermilion? Uh, you know, again, we were selling the most, like, like we have Zorn palette, which by the way, we have special deal just for the holidays again. So if you will buy our new Zorn palette. So we will include oleo gel and Velasquez for you free. And we are actually dressing up in the beautiful red, uh, uh, the uh, holiday box. So, but anyway, we are including their cadmium yellow light. And um, now I need to rethink about, and so uh, it could be cadmium yellow, uh, cadmium red medium. So both of them, Maybe like if you put them together <laughs> would be somewhere, but nothing, nothing can uh, substitute of vermilion, nothing. Going on to another question. Um, can you add barite to titanium to make it more Absolutely. transparent? Absolutely. This is great way to do it. So barite is like we already mentioned a little bit cooler side. So then it will work beautifully with titanium. And, uh, and in fact, um, we are only crazy ones uh, in our company when you buy titanium and you probably will be like uh, thinking like, what's this behavior? Because we don't add anything. We don't put uh, any fillers to titanium. It's very uh, crazy powerful. But all other companies to make that little bit more manageable, which is, which is actually not a bad idea. So they all add it in or chalk or barite or something. So usually that's already, it's barite. usually yeah. it's barite because yeah. it is very transparent and uh, it does work very well with titanium. So yes, absolutely. And that's actually what some companies call their flake white replacement uh, because they're just taking titanium they're adding um, a little bit of yellow and, and a barite. little bit of a yellow ochre and and the barite, and they. But of course, it's nothing like, um, you know. I think like on that. one of the programs, I actually was uh, I was showing the substitution for the uh, for the lead white, and it's not even close working. But again, it's um, it's very yeah, it's very good one to do that. 
Speaking about lead white? Yes. We love to talk about lead white. Uh, let me see. I can't live without lead white number two. <laughs> Is there a way we can learn about the upcoming shortage of lead white? So don't uh, worry. There isn't a shortage at this time. It's not called shortage, but we did have we did have a shortage. Scary, yes. Yeah, we but had yeah, had yeah. scare time two one and one and a half year ago because uh, during the COVID. Uh, the production of uh, lead white was completely stopped. And so then that was a crazy, scary moment for us. We are out of that situation. We do have plenty of uh, lead white. Don't uh, hoard. We, we do have people when they see the new, new, you know, batches coming and they are buying like, you know, 30 tubes at a time of the, you know, 150 mil, please don't do this. We, we, I mean, I would love to sell it, of course, but there are no shortage yet. And if something will happen, we definitely will let you know on advance. And uh, so we making plenty of lead white number two. Stack process, when is it coming back? Yes, so um, it's, the pigment is ready. The problem happened during the last uh, uh, COVID time. And so unfortunately, George doesn't allow anybody else touch. Before we had uh, one employee doing this. And so uh, it's not happening anymore. Uh, and unfortunately, George doesn't have right now time because of the new website. And now we are coming out with, uh, from that, although uh, I can tell you this, we just uh, catch new wave of the COVID on our, uh, on our company and we have um, our shipping girl very sick. And so George and I, we are work working on shipping now, imagine that. So it's, we are a small company. It's every time we are closing one hole, another uh, hole is uh, opening. And so it's ready. We do have pigment. Um, it's just not, it's just not we're, process. We're, as yeah, a, we just have a process. We're going to try to do that. And I'm afraid to, nope, don't promise. I won't promise. Because but, he always promises yeah, and yeah. I'm answering afterwards. So no, I, we will not promise, but it's there. So it's not like we don't have it. And we will announce, we will make big announcement again. But you are absolutely, uh, like uh, if you are absolutely crazy need, call me. We always have stash somewhere. So call us on, uh, it's 888-361-5900 uh, and ask for me. That's in the U.S. and Canada. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Amaresh asks, uh, how can he join the cohorts? So Amaresh, you go into paintingbestpractices.com. And uh, so as soon as you will be there, so please you have to uh, register, with register the website. first mm -hmm. on the website. Yes, because otherwise we are, we are not taking people who don't know what they're doing. So because this will be a special, it will be special society. We do want, we are building slowly on painting best practices because we really want people like you who are really interested in what we are doing and what's happening in the industry. So then, and then when, once you register, you just send us message and we, uh, we will approve you for the uh, cohorts. And so then you definitely will see us on December 3rd. This will be this uh, Saturday. And uh, Amrush's second question since we're, is it possible to ship to Sri Lanka? We did sell, we did send to Sri Lanka and it's not, not, uh, it's not as dangerous, not bad. So just, just have to check with your local <sighs> customs because each, every country is a little bit different. But it's like we, for the longest time, we, uh, we were not sending to Mexico, but suddenly it was good. We were sending so many packages to Mexico. And then now Teresa Ohaka has the class. And so of course, all her students are buying our color specifically for your class and we have three uh, packages stuck somewhere customs, so, yeah. on the customs it's and so and it's unfortunately uh, problems in customs yeah yeah so you need to know about your com uh, your country's uh, customs 
So we, uh, someone asks here, uh, do cadmium paint fumes cause issues in relation to breathing it? No, uh, uh, no. good, good. Uh, it's a good question. Yeah. I actually was thinking to, to mention this. It's not about breathing the fumes. There are no fumes, uh, except, of course, for just linseed oil. And cadmiums not smell much, uh, as like if you will take like lead white, and so uh, it does really smell... Um, although George is saying that it's like sweet smell, but uh, mm -hmm. for me it's vinegary and it's actually very, very good, uh, good smell. But again, not lead white, not cadmiums. Um, have there are any... no fumes that are dangerous. Yeah. It's the inhalation it's the, when of you the cadmium breathe the pigment. Part particle. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, another question. Um, uh, someone mentions inhalation can happen very easily with paint making. That's true. Yes, that's, that's true. Uh, that's why we always, always say then police wear mask if you don't have a special box. So we, you actually can buy. It's very inexpensive if you do want to make your own uh, colors. So uh, how's that called, George? It's that box like you put two hands there and so uh, you can use a glove box or what we've recommended yeah. is a basically it's a blast cabinet you can buy a bench top type yeah. and so that you can um if you use that, that instead if you that so. you know want to make your colors and so you you do worry about uh the health problems yes absolutely other ways just wear a mask clean your surfaces after when you finish and so then and it's not uh, as powdery like what you would think, like like with uh, any um, synthetic pigments where they literally like like in Prussian blue, you afraid even or or uh, thalo, uh, I mean that uh, yeah, thalo green or blue. Whew, don't even try to breathe with that because it will be all over. Cadmiums are not, so they're you know sticking together, but still, please wear a mask. Edwin, another lead white question, and this is in regards to the form that they need to fill in in yes. Europe. Uh, Edwin, that's for the entire European Union. So that form is required. It's a, it's a form that the Germans put out, but it is required for us to ship anywhere in the European Union. Not outside the European Union, but anywhere in the European Union. And all you have to do is fill in the form it's very to the easy best form. of your ability. Once you do this, there we, will be... You do be, it one time. Yeah, you do once. And so then afterwards, because it's uh, keeps in files, and so then then you are good to go for, for, next, um, you know, for next orders. Do we have a two-tube limit for limited colors? <laughs> <laughs> we, there is on, I think, only... Uh, which color did we have? Uh, we had for stock. Yeah. We, we did have, we did allow only two. And uh, we, didn't, um, uh, we didn't do this for our historical five colors. And, um, and did go very well. And like I said, like I mentioned uh, last program, so we did sell very fast. We don't have any of them, which actually gave us idea. So then you are not opposed to use... Uh, not only historical colors, but uh, in jars. And it was beautifully packed. And so I think we have only left cinnabar, a uh, couple, uh, couple uh, jars left, but other than, than that. But we, we have them in tubes. He, so the now we have malachite and, and or piment in yeah. tubes. So then at least you know then it's available for you. Um, not azurite. Um, I I will not be, you know, I will not suggest to do azurite for George in the tube. It probably will be bad separation. But anyway, it's future thinking. But um, no, we don't have any uh, limits for now, except stock. Do you make barite with linseed oil? No, we do with walnut oil. And the reason is? Um, just because yellowing. Yeah. It's yellow anyway, which ha you need to think about. It's very transparent color. It's color. It's, it's, very it's an transparent. extender pigment. It's, it's a transparent so pigment. When you think about, like, we, we had this, uh, you know, people are freaking out. They're putting barite alone 
just like to, to make the, the whole passage with barite. And then they call in us and say, oh, this is yellowing. Of course it's yellowing because barite is completely transparent. What you looking through just to oil. And remember that I know people don't want to hear that, but all oils yellow, all including poppy seed, including walnut, everything is yellow. So that's why we're doing in walnut, at least it's a little bit lighter. But again, if you will just make the, the color itself, so it will be looking yellow. Alizarin has a reputation for fading when mixed with chrome yellow. How, do, how about anthraquinone red when mixed with chrome colors? It's advertised as more permanent than alizarin. Okay. So I, I know George will chip in, but I will start right now because um, so alizarin known uh, for light fastness, light. Uh, light fastness number two and then watercolors number three. So uh, we know about alizarin that happening. So, but again, um, we will talk about light fastness, specifically alizarin, on next program because, like I mentioned on the beginning of the program, so we did make a tests with Prussian blue and alizarin crimson, our alizarin crimson and our Prussian blue, and um, our uh, five or six, I don't remember, uh, whites. So actually alizarin is not performing as bad as we, we thought it will be. So mix, uh, go into quanacradon again, um, antique, what's that? Antacradon, yeah? So then like- Anthroquinone. Uh, Which by the way, alizarin is an anthroquinone. The, the difference is that the modern synthetic pigment is a different form of that. And yes. it has a better reputation uh, for not fading. The key question here is, can you mix it with chrome? And the, and the answer is, we don't really know at this point in time. The reputation that you're referring to is from old, old. literature. Because our and, chromes are now different. Yeah. And, and we, again, we are only company who are actually making chromes. Nobody else making chromes anymore, chrome yeah. yellows. And, and, uh, and what, by the way, we, ha we have this scary moment, yes, where we don't know if we will have uh, to the but we'll see how that we will we will talk about that later but anyway so uh, so the key the key thing to keep in mind is that a lot of this information is repeated from 19th century manuals when that was observed casually not scientifically and so uh, there is currently very little evidence that fading occurs however uh, the fading actually and the problem might have been more associated with the chrome yellow, which did fade uh, due to the way it was made in the 19th century, not the way it's made in the 20th century. So uh, that's one of the things that we're going to we're going to do tests on. And uh, remember, I, I told you, send us your favorite colors, uh, ask us what, you know, because we are on the mood now to make this test. And so since first test went so great, we are so excited about this. So now we can actually really test any, uh, any combinations. So um, I, I just wrote for myself just as a reminder. So because um, obviously when we, we are in the lab, we are more concentrated on something what, you know, what more like important for us as a company but since we are doing this anyway so we would be gladly uh, gladly doing this for you too so just send us your uh, ideas and we would do that another question here will orpiment tube come with a warning yes it is and it's and actually it, coming in the special tube yep. there's no way you will be opening that it's uh, it's uh, if you bought from us stock lead, you remember how it's, it was coming in the tube. So uh, same exactly with, uh, with Orpiment. Definitely all kind of, you know, uh, labels where your children will not be, able, hopefully will not be able to open. But Just keep away from yes, them, please, please lock it up. This is, 
This is, is one of the... It is a toxic... Yes. It's, it's arsenic sulfide, folks. Let's just... And we don't really want to sell it to everybody, just people that are interested in using that particular pigment. Um, another... Do, uh, do we plan to add copper panels to our store in the EU? <laughs> we would love to. It's Still the cost it's... of shipping is just prohibitive. We may try to do work out something in the future, but it's it's just prohibitive shipping from the U.S. So it's we a... do have some people buying and having it shipped from the U.S., but. Um, because it's, it's one it's, thing to send to, to Europe, but it's another thing uh, to send from, from Germany to Europe. And it's, uh, it's all kind of required. You, like you, mean, the you mean from the U.S. Yeah, from, to our, our German distribution yeah. site? Yeah, yeah so it's, it's a lot of minuses yet. So we will... We're trying to overcome that. Yeah. yeah. Could you possibly send a link to a paint-making box you recommend? Yes. Uh, that's actually... The best thing to do is to go to a Harbor Freight store or to their website or on Amazon and just put in the words sandblasting cabinet. Those and can, buy the small one. Just, they they, they really have a, sell They have like, a benchtop models yeah. and they usually cost like 100 to $120. So that's, that's, it's kind of a makeshift glove box and that, that can be used. Finally, let me see. We have some last questions here. What do what do colors become less permanent? Where do they go? Yeah. Sunlight. <laughs> they don't really go anywhere. They just they still change. put there. <clears throat> oh, Uncle Sixty, I didn't see you for a long time. So great. Oh, he's he's asked a couple questions there. Oh, you see. <clears throat> so uh, glad to see you here. So one day I will know your real name. But anyway, they're not going anywhere. They just becoming. Uh, less uh, colorful or like in uh, in some cases brown from green to brown they go or from let's say if uh, like chromes were uh, during the 19th century where they were bright yellows and then they become just like bold colors like some kind of brownish and that's what happened to one goes um, beautiful um, What's that color called? Sunflowers. Sunflowers. It's, it's either cadmium yellow so, or it was the cadmium yellow or it was the chrome yellow. Chrome yellows, yeah. So both of those, again, in 19th century colors. They keep in mind that the two biggest things that affect colors is light, especially in the UV region, and also uh, moisture or humidity. So, uh, and that's only because it causes a chemical change and the chemical change causes the color to change. So that's why we, uh, we have Which we found, fading. again, we will talk about this next, uh, next time when we will talk about light fastness. So then how varnishes help. This is amazing. So then this is just like small tips for you for next time when you come here to. Um, okay. So do we have more uh, questions? Looks or? like that's it. That's it. Great. Yeah. So we we so happy to see you. And so we're so happy to be back to our normal. So although holiday season is still continue, we still have great deals on website. So please pay attention because um, since I was shipping last couple of days, uh, so I noticed people uh, ordering separate what they are accustomed to order and they don't go and look bundles and then I was like geez you could save a lot of money on bundles but so just pay attention something new in our website and then of course we do have holiday promotions and you will see then all our palettes uh, the oil color palettes like uh, they all in um, have s special deals and um, and just again, repeat that right now, all cadmium colors, if you buy, to, if you buy yes. uh, two oh. or more, you can get up to 30% off. Yes. If you buy, yeah, I think it's like if you buy four, so it's 30%, somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, try it.
Go this to the is, bundles. Yeah. Bundles, uh, and it will be first bundle the, at there. At the top of the page, go to the bundles. So and you'll people see who that. attended today definitely uh, will have this That's opportunity. That's true from all websites, Canada as well as Europe. In Canada, you don't have cadmium maroon yeah, yet. Too, we'll we will it send it. So yeah. and we will prolong that uh, that special deal for Canada and um, and you, Europe. Thank you very much. Uh, cohorts, uh, see you on December 3rd, 11 o'clock Pacific time morning. And so very exciting. And so then uh, next um, our AMA we will announce <coughs> and probably will be in a couple of weeks we will do. And uh, thank you again being with us. Have a great day and um, see you next time.